everyone. Um, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Cult Foundation and uh, Sapna Ma'am for um, inviting me um, uh, to this talk. Uh, um, I think the basic thing here that I would like to talk about is my journey. And uh, through that, I think maybe I can um, you know, acquaint all of you with uh, the, the, the process and the work that it takes uh, to write a book, to get it published, the ideation and how it all comes together. Um, so I think, uh, let me begin by telling you how I started writing. And so um, initially, I mean, I, I grew up reading books uh, and books were always around me. And I, no matter what the situation was, I would always have a book in my bag. It was one of those uh, scenarios. Uh, and growing up, uh, my mother, who was an English teacher, so you know, I was forced to read books in a, in, 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 in a lot of uh, ways. And eventually, like, the habit developed and I started reading on my own. And I think that from a very young age, I was aware of the fact that I wanted to do something in the arts. And I tried music and this and that. And eventually, when I started writing at the age of 15, it was primarily for music magazines where I would write reviews. And slowly the interest in writing developed and obviously the urge to write fiction and poetry and all this other stuff was uh, always there. But uh, I think it really uh, grew when I was in my late teens and uh, it was during that time that I started writing my first novel which then uh, was published as uh, The Lamentations of a Sombre Sky in uh, 2016, which was when I was 21. Um, but let me just go back a little. I think that um, reading, again, as, as, as um, Usha Bande Ma'am also pointed out, is, is, is essential to uh, becoming a, a, a good writer. Because I think it serves as a barometer where you can me measure, yourself, uh, me measure yourself against like, other writers from the past and like, uh, really figure out what the standards are. Because without... Uh, any knowledge of what has already been done and what people are doing currently, I think it's it's, it's impossible to write in a, a lot of ways. Um, in which reminds me, there's this, there is this uh, passage from uh, my book, which is coming out uh, next month, uh, A Map of Longings, where I actually talk about the process of writing and uh, the process of ideation. And uh, there's this small paragraph that I... Uh, I'm reminded of uh, where uh, I talk about the process of writing and uh, it, it goes something like uh, in fables that one uh, one hears of like Arabic and Urdu and Persian poets who, who were basically asked by their masters to uh, memorize like thousands of verses of uh, by other poets only to like forget them before writing their own verses. And I think that this practice really allowed them to learn from their precursors and to keep this tradition alive, but also like to expand the universe through their metaphors and uh, you know provided them a barometer against which they could measure their works. So I think this was this is like to begin with. I think the first step to becoming a good writer would be to or a good storyteller, in fact, no matter what the form is, uh, would be to really like start reading books. Uh, and especially for all the young people out there, like that is, I think, one of the most most essential things. Uh, so, um, right after the publication of my I think we've lost connectivity with Mr. Manan Kapoor. Yeah. 
I think he might be facing some issues regarding network. I think he'll rejoin soon. We just wait for him. Network is a big issue these days since there is so much traffic on these lines. So many people are online. It's not easy to you know, maintain the continuity. Hello. Uh, yes, Mr. Manu, could you please think... uh, speak into the mic because one, you're not very audible. Uh, the okay. voice is uh, very soft and uh, okay. I think there is some issue with the network. Yeah, I think uh, there was some problem with my internet, so I had to connect the uh, other, yeah. I th yeah. Am I audible now? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, as I was, I mean, I was talking about my time at Ambedkar, and I think that was where a lot of things solidified for me, personally, because I was in an environment where I was surrounded by a lot of people who wanted to become writers in the future, who wanted to become poets and uh, academics, and uh, I had a lot of creative writing professors and who really taught me things that uh, will stay with me for the rest of my life, really. And uh, I mean, I, I remember one of my professors at Ambedkar was uh, Dr. Belinda Dhanoa, who's uh, a very well-known writer. And I think from the beginning of the course to the end of it, the only question that she asked me, and one of the questions that I still ask myself sometimes is, uh, you are writing fiction or poetry or whatever other form you might choose, but what are you really trying to say? And I think that is one of the most important things that I feel that uh, most of the writers need to ask themselves, as in, uh, you are writing a story, but what? why exactly are you writing it? What is the point of you writing the story? Because that is what really makes the story unique, I feel. Um, it, I mean, story, as I think uh, Usha Bandebam talked about it again, the stories have been around for like thousands of years. and. But we still go back to the same themes. We still go back to the same sort of like characters. We still go back to the duality of good versus evil. And I mean, if you really look at it, if you if you really break down Harry Potter's the the, the seven or eight books that there are, uh, and you go back to the Greek myths, I mean, there are a lot of similarities in terms of the characters, in terms of like the the myths and legends that she's uh, that she's really chosen to work with. So, I think it's really like the unique voice that brings out the story and so it's really important uh, to ask oneself at all stages of writing what what are you trying to really say through this work be it a poem or be it a short story or even like a, a full-fledged novel but I think that is one of the most important things that one needs to sort of think about while writing and uh, so and another thing that I really feel is important is how one structures the novel. I mean, there are. I, I feel like there are two types of writers, uh, and here I'm especially talking about like about novelists who who, who have to write like sixty to seventy to eighty thousand words uh, as a project. Where uh, I feel like structuring your work is really important because you you have a story, you have an idea of what you try, what what you want to say, what you're trying to say, and. Uh, there is a story in your mind, but how, how do you end up stru uh, structuring it so that it turns out to be a proper story? So for that, I mean, there are some basic concepts which I feel most of you might be acquainted with, but uh, I mean, so you have the story, you have the narrative, the setting, the characters, but more importantly, how you bring out those characters and how you bring out the story and the themes uh, that you've tried to encapsulate through your story I think that's the tough part in uh, the process of writing a book because what you imagine in your head is not what really goes down when you start writing the book. That That's not really what happens. It, it, it takes uh, major reworking uh, and that, that that's really a, a process which requires time and uh, patience. So uh, in a lot of ways, a lot of writing and I think a lot of writers including Oran Pamuk have talked about the process of editing and why editing your work yourself is really important. And uh, I mean, I, I've written at least like eight to nine drafts of my seven of, of my second book. So I think that really uh, has helped improve. And if you go back and read the first draft, it's 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 nothing compared to what it, what the book is now. And the importance of time, 
I remember I, I think I finished the first draft about a year ago. And since then to now, I have been constantly revising the work because it, you really need some distance from uh, your project to bring out certain aspects from it. It's just, I mean, you might be too close. So you need all, all of these distancing uh, elements and, uh, to really bring out the, the, the essence of the story that you're trying to tell. So I really feel that uh, when you have um, a distancing factor, suppose, say, You've, you've been writing the book constantly for three months, four months, five months, and now you have a manuscript and you go back to editing at the same time. I really don't feel that you'll be able to do a good job. So to really bring it out, I feel that you need to spend time. You need to stay away from the manuscript as well or stay away from a poem. And I, I think it's the same uh, for poetry when it comes to that. Uh, the editing process needs to be really, it needs to be done properly because again, you're sending something out into the world, right? So once it's published, there's no chance that anything can be changed. So, and I know, like, I mean, in my first book, I, there, there are a couple of errors, a couple of typos, which I couldn't catch at that moment. And that really made me realize this one thing, that these errors are going to stay with you throughout. So one really needs to make sure that all of that is, uh, you know, on the same page and, like, that there are no errors, there are no, you know, typos in your book, there are no structuring errors, all the things, if you're, if you're using, like for my second book, my biography of Aga Shahid Ali, uh, a lot of it is factual information, so, and, and not just about his life, but also his surroundings and, and the, the period in which he grew up with, which was basically post-partition, and, uh, you know, there are, there's a lot of stuff about people like Nehru and Vega Maktar, so I really think to get those facts right, to get all of those stories right, that's that's really important, even if you're writing fiction, which which was the case with my first book, where it was set in Kashmir in the early 90s, and those were really turbulent times. And to get the whole essence of what was going on in Kashmir during, uh, you know, the early 90s or, or even the late 80s and the whole politics of it, I think that, that that's really important that you you, you get it right, that you have a clear idea of what you're trying to say, but you also like stick to the facts. And that's how you really bring a, a lot of it out. Because I feel that even if like one is writing fantasy, uh, it is grounded very much in uh, the reality of the world. And uh, I think that's primarily the case with like people like, with, with you know, famous writers like uh, Marquez or uh, Nabokov, where, I mean, even if they're talking about the world around you, or, I mean, even if it's a fantasy uh, story, I think at the end of the day, it speaks a lot about our world. So uh, with all of these factors, and I'm, I mean, I'm really trying to break it down here and maybe I'm going to pass, but uh, I, I think essentially like it comes down to the same thing at the end of the day, be it any genre that you're working with, because I personally feel that there is a very thin line between uh, all these genres, uh, whether you call it non-fiction or fiction, I mean, if you've read the likes of uh, the right, I mean, writers like Svetlana Alexevich, who, although she writes non-fiction, it, it really read, reads like fiction because at the end of the day, she understands that even if you're writing a biography, even if it is, uh, you know, the life of someone and you have to stick to the facts, at the end of the day, it is a story that needs to be talked about, that needs to be brought uh, onto the page and you know your characters still have all those feelings and emotions that need to be uh, explored properly even in a biography where primarily it is about facts so you know, to really write beautifully I think I think all of these elements are really important and uh, so the first would be that stick to the basics uh, the the basics the five things the, the four or five things like character your, your narrative, your setting, uh, the voice you're using. And so all of these things really come into play. And I think with uh, different revisions, at least that's what I do, I focus on one aspect, be it the characters. And so in one revision, I will go through all the characters and see if they're fully developed, if they're not, if they need more reworking, if something needs to be changed, if I need more research to uh, really bring them out or some concerns that they might uh, have and, what, and all that they're contributing to the book. The second stage might be that I am really just looking at the setting where, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to bring out the best I can from uh, the setting that 
uh, I mean, be it Kashmir for, for my first book or uh, Delhi and Kashmir and the US for my second book, where one really has to bring out all those elements because that they really affect the your characters and how they respond to their environment. So all of that is really important. Uh, and I think one of the biggest decisions that a, a writer makes when they start writing a book is... Uh, do they write in first person or second person or second? Or, I mean, there have been books in second person as well. Uh, or do you go with the third person? Uh, so it, it's really like a decision that comes down to the story that you want to tell. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. it it's just a matter of what will bring out the best uh, from your work, from your story, and how. Uh, what's the best way to tell it from your point of view? So all of that needs to be factored in and... I, I really think that when you edit your book, when you give it time and when you sort of distance yourself from the book for a, for a while and then go back to it, you, you, you really uh, read a very different manuscript. I mean, when I look back at my work, which I've written, uh, I think, six months or seven months ago, all the stories or the essays, essays I've worked on, uh, I really feel that today, if I wrote the same thing, I would do it extremely like differently. I mean, it, it would be very different altogether. So, I really feel that when when you you've started working on something, I, I think one really needs to be patient, and that is the key here. Because even with publishing, when you go out looking for a publisher for your either your story or if, even if you're trying to get published in a magazine. Uh, which takes a long time, actually. Uh, it, it, it will take you about a month or two before you hear back from uh, um, these publishers if you're a first-time writer. And even the magazines, unless your article or, or your essay is a very timely piece, it will take them a long time to get back to you. So it is a tedious and tiring and... I mean, it, it is a tedious and tiring process and definitely one requires a lot of patience uh, to deal with that, and especially when you're publishing a book or your collection of poetry, uh, when it comes, uh, when you come to publish it, a lot of publishers will take about six months before they get back to you. So, and I think that is the best time when one can like really work on their uh, on the editing of the draft. And uh, so, really, it is a time-consuming process at uh, various levels. And but eventually, I feel that the rewards are. I mean, good enough for one to like, you know, put in all that effort and work into publishing a book. So, I, I really, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much that I wanted to share with you. Uh, uh, is there anything that you would like to ask me about this whole process? Uh, Manan, can I ask you something? Sure, sure. Uh, we always hear about this uh, this uh, phenomena called the writer's block. Right. You know, whenever you think of uh, maybe writing or maybe planning to write something, there is right. something that comes in the way and we are not able to put it in writing or we are not able to express as we would want to. You know, right. there is a very beautiful story inside us, but it doesn't come out. Right. So how do we overcome that? I think what's at least worked for me personally is that um, a lot of people I know who've had like great ideas uh, for books, very innovative, very creative ideas for books and very nice stories, except they often come to me and they're like, okay, we can't write it. This, this, at least this, this is what I do. I mean, you really need to spend time in front of that blank screen. You need to really face that blank page. And once you've spent enough time, once you've sat down and because I think at least I personally treat this as a full-time profession. So uh, for me, eight hours every day is sort of what I put into this. So even if I, I am facing what is usually referred to as a writer's block, after one hour or two hours of staring at a blank screen, something comes out. Uh, I'm sure it's, 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 it's not good enough uh, to uh, be published, but over time, I mean, that's what I felt. Like, I mean, usually I get stuck on the first line. It, it'll take me probably hours to get the first line right. And once that's done, once that's passed, I can write with the flow. But getting that first line can be really hard sometimes. But over time, one realizes all the, all the tricks and how to like get past all these blocks that 
uh, would usually stop you. So I don't think writing the, I mean, in the in the first draft, everything has to be perfect. Most of my drafts that I've written are usually very raw and very rough. It is only after I've written them and I see that there is something special here, which probably can be published, which uh, people will enjoy reading. That uh, I start working on it and polishing it. So I really think that. You know, looking for perfection uh, in your first line of the first draft is is not really the way to go. So, okay, thank you. Is anyone else with any other questions, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Please carry on, Pooja. Yes. Yeah. My question is uh, that uh, could you suggest uh, some engaging books, uh, you know, to develop reading habits for the be- for the beginners? If you could, please. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Could you please uh, repeat your question? To develop, uh, to develop the reading habits, you know, I want you to suggest some, you know, engaging books, some interesting books, so that uh, uh, we could embark on this journey. Oh, right. Okay. So, I mean, I I think reading is a very personal thing, and I mean, reading preferences. I mean, it it really comes down to what you want to write. So, I mean, I personally read writers like Oran Pawak, and uh, you know, from India. I mean. people like arundhati roy to uh, you know i mean salman rushdie this that so i really think if you read good writers and there is yes there is a sort of distinction between good writers and you know writers who are so good but that's all subjective that's that all goes down to the person uh, reading those books but uh, i really feel that if 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 you want to start writing you must start reading people who have been recognized by you know recognized all over the world so someone like a haruki murakami uh he's a really good writer to start off with i mean a lot of times when uh i reach that place where you know since i uh, where i've been like writing for a couple of months uh constantly and i haven't been reading anything and i want to go back to reading books murakami is one of the writers i go back to usually because it's such an easy place to start that uh his his writing just flows so it's it's not really it's, it's almost like effortless reading so i think that really brings out a lot and i think it's really important for all the writers to understand the how to write that effortlessly so that exercise and read reading a book right after you've read it i think that's one of the most important things that you can do because the first time when you read it it's mostly to enjoy the book but when you read it for the second time it's it's really like you break break down the book and what the writer has done and i think at the end of the day it, it comes down to your personal preferences where what you want to do with uh, what genre what what style of writing thank you so much for for the suggestion sir um there's someone else as well who wanted to ask something yes sir yes, i have a question yeah. sir please show some insight or please some, give some insight on the copyright process while getting a book published there is not really i mean i remember you know i i remember when i had finished the first draft of my book and that's when i did, did some research on the same subject because i really wanted to protect my work and i thought there would be something but there really isn't anything and i think the, no publisher would uh, really like steal your book right i mean that's not what they do they do quite the opposite they will publish your book and because that's their job that's how they earn money and if suppose tomorrow tomorrow a penguin random house or a harper collins is accused of uh, uh, you know stealing someone's idea or stealing someone's manuscript i don't think that will look really good on them so that's not something that usually happens uh, in this process but and i mean i haven't uh, I I don't really think actually that it's a very important thing to do. So as long as you've emailed it to yourself, I think that it should be good enough as a proof that you know you've written the book. I think that's one of the things that I read back then that if you actually just email it to yourself and you have the time stamp there, so that really uh, goes on and proves that you have the book to yourself. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Anyone else would like to ask? Uh, can I ask qu- a question, please? Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Uh, so basically, I read this somewhere that whenever you start writing, you either start with the characters or the plot. You have something clear in your head. 
like either the character or the plot what happens with me is i know where to begin with i know where to end and in the process i chalk the middle but i do not know where what characters to put in because like even if i have my characters in front of me i do not know how to basically show them in that situation what would be your advice in that well i, I think it really depends on the kind of story you're writing but at the end of the day it comes down to the fact that you need to make a decision how to incorporate those characters in your story uh, i mean it's i mean definitely it's something that takes time but um ultimately it it is uh, you who are going to decide how uh, you need to like introduce some characters and you know how to flesh them out actually throughout the story and uh, how they develop so i mean there's no right way to do it i mean that's the best i can tell you so or there's no wrong way to do it either so it it all comes down to what you are trying to do with the book and where your the the direction where you're headed so that really i mean i mean i'll, I'll give you an example where uh, in the late, in in my biography of shahid i think begum akhtar was a very important part in his life so i had to introduce begum akhtar somehow and i i couldn't think of any other way to introduce a singer like begum akhtar uh, you know but uh, at the end of the day how it happened was i was looking at this documentary about begum akhtar and she was singing and i thought why not start with this so it the chapter and where i actually introduced wake up after that really starts from a concert so i mean there are a million ways i could have done that i could have you know started talking about how they first met how this happened how this that but it really comes down to what you want to do with it that's what i feel at least okay thank you any other questions please uh yeah ma'am i had a question yeah oh so, uh so currently we're living in a time where there's a lot of censorship involved uh, i'm sorry your, your uh, voice is Kushi. breaking yeah. yeah your voice is cracking kushi am i audible now no no your the voice is cracking um, okay i'll get my phone from there Would you like to come again? Um yeah, is it fine? I mean I can I can understand some things, yes. Could you just go on otherwise you can um maybe just type the question uh yeah, in the chat. I, I, yeah. 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 Yes, do we have any other questions please? uh i have one question yes um sir uh, first of all i would like to thank you to inspire us and uh, now sir uh, you were talking about uh, rechecking the draft right. so uh, a problem that i face is that after reaching uh, rechecking it uh, multiple times uh, right. the flow of writing somewhere uh, vanishes um you mean after you've edited the book uh, or like i mean whatever you're trying to write so uh, the, the uh, in the first draft there is some uh, uh, there are my uh, feelings and all that which are uh, quite raw and then when i try to edit them right. uh, the uh, original flow of the writing disappears no, but so that's it... yeah no no i understand what you're trying to say so i i, I feel that you only need like i mean the only thing you need to uh, establish is where the balance is so that's that's really important in terms of what you're trying to say uh, through the story uh, i mean there's um really no right way, again there's really no right way to do it because i mean if there was a right or wrong it, it wouldn't be creative anymore i feel because there would be terms that dictated how you write and how you didn't right so uh, again i mean it's, it's it's it again comes down to you and how you try to balance all of it uh, how you try to in- introduce different things because at the end of the day i mean without editing i, I don't feel that uh, you're doing justice to anything I, 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 you really need to rework what you've written uh, unless like you know i mean 
I mean, there have been writers who've, who've written first drafts and, you know, those went on to win, like, major awards. But uh, that's really a rarity. So, yeah. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think, Manan, you can address Kushi's uh, question yeah. now. Um, once I'll just open it. The current times are doing it. Um, well, not really. I mean, until now, I haven't had any problems expressing my opinions, at least. Uh, I mean, I know that in the larger context of, I mean, not, not just like India, but like, I mean, all across the world, like there's, there, there is this like sort of wave of right wing nationalism. But again, like there's no, at least like personally, I haven't had like, uh, I haven't had like an experience where I've had to like sort of censor myself. But, uh, I mean, even with the second book where I talk a lot about Kashmir and all that's been going there for the past 20, 30 years now, uh, I feel that I had the liberty to work with everything. And uh, definitely it had, to be, it had to be done in a certain way where I had to reference it a lot. And I had to like, uh, you know, work with, the, I mean, I had to prove that I was working with facts and not just like fiction. But uh, I haven't personally experienced something or... Uh, or, uh, you know, an event where I've had to sort of censor myself because, I mean, it is what it is, right? So, yeah. I have a question. Um, yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, please go. Yeah. Sir, uh, my question is how much, uh, I mean, how do you balance out between, you know, uh, maintaining the delicate balance uh, while writing a uh, narrative or whatever you write, like uh, how much you put uh, of your own thoughts and uh, you keep, you know, readers' perspective in your mind. How do you create that balance? How how do you weave that story? I don't think keeping the reader in mind is a good a approach to take because, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I think the only reader you should be really thinking about is you. Uh, so... I, I think that's really important uh, because if you start writing uh, for a certain audience, if you if you start writing certain things uh, just for a certain audience, that that really changes the way you write and what you want to write. So I think the the best thing would be to stick to what you would like to read. So I mean, write the best book that I mean, you know, you think would be uh, uh, ideal. But and. I mean, the only way to establish, like, I think that uh, sort of like balance between uh, your own uh, creativity and uh, what should be there on the page is, I think, you know, understanding the fact that uh, writing at the end of the day is a very conscious, like, I mean, it's a very conscious act. Uh, so you really need to be on all of your toes as Bandham. And again, I, I'll bring it up. Uh, she said focus is one of the most important things. I think. If you, you yes, you need wings and you know you need all that creativity to uh, really uh, push you. But uh, again, there has to be some sort of balance where you are grounded still. So, and that I think comes with your own understanding, with your own writing. When when you, when you spent enough time working towards something, I think you start realizing what the how it can be improved, what can be done to really uh, make it better. But also like. I mean, it all really like takes time, so and uh, patience from your own side. So, I think that's the most important thing because at the end of the day, you'll come to your uh, understanding, your own conclusion uh, as you go. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just one more thing to add to what Kushi Gupta was asking. Right. Uh, I just want to ask whether uh, you know is it is it a conscious effort on the part of the writer to you know steer away from controversial ground at times uh, maybe to steer away from controversial grounds yeah um I, I don't know ma'am I mean when I look at some I mean it, it's very important for the writer to be political I feel yeah. I think it's very important that uh, your writing reflects your politics. I think uh, the other day we, we were on the talk and I think I said the same thing where it, it, it's really important for your politics to be there in your book because I think the act of writing itself is very political. So, I mean, steering away from politics, 
is also an is, is also in a lot of ways I feel a political lack because there's I think a very uh, I mean there is a reason that one, one might do that right so uh, and I think most of the writers that I admire I think it's uh, I mean I, I think they have spoken about the politics of their time be it uh, the 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 you know gay rights movement during the seventies or uh, the the political writers uh, from Hamoud Darwish to even Aga Shahidali, who was in many in, in many ways a political um, poet. So I feel that if your politics is represented in your writing and done in the right way, but not at the expense of uh, the subject matter. Like I think if you if you or the aesthetic of what you're trying to write, I think that is again where you sort of establish a balance. So. Yeah, but what I mean but, is that you don't compromise on creativity at the. Uh, it no, should not no, be yes. at the cost of uh, playing no. safe. Yes, ma'am, definitely. I I feel that it's 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 just that uh, that balance again. You you need to strike a strike a balance where, I mean, you you you. If if you're really like pushing your politics down just to like bring out a certain aspect of your writing or you know bring out the aesthetic of your writing, I think that's not the right thing to do. Everything can be there, but. You need to strike that balance, and that's something I think all writers figure out on their own how and what's the best way to do it. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else would like to ask Manan any questions? I had another question. Yeah. Uh, sure. Who's this? Driti. Uh, so basically, uh, like what even Usha ma'am said that uh, when you write a character, it's basically uh, if the character is good and if something bad happens in the end, you feel bad for that character and vice versa. So basically what I'm trying to ask is, is it important to show the character only in good light? Because uh, there are grace in all of us, I believe, like all none of us are perfect. Even characters aren't. So, is it important to show like grace and how to limit ourselves to like, are we going like to into the blacks of the character? Or right. Or no, but I mean that's again like a really, I mean again, and I'm gonna say the same thing, but it comes down to you and what you ultimately want to write and what your goal is. That um, I feel that, I mean. There are so many antagonists who I really like. I mean, even if you look at Shakespeare, where Macbeth's there, and I mean, yes, at the end of the day, you don't feel bad for him, but uh, a lot of Shakespeare at least focused a lot on uh, Macbeth and uh, why he was trying to do what he was doing, because he was so driven by power, right? So I think in trying to understand that, like, I mean, it, it really adds to the understanding of the readers and how one perceives people because at the end of the day you are writing about people so if there are greys yes definitely they will come out and ideally they should come out because uh, the world isn't something like a chiaroscuro painting where everything is either black or white it is largely just grey so I feel that even if you're talking about antagonists even if you're exploring their lives uh, I think it's an exercise that, that requires a lot of uh, work I was recently uh, talking to one of my friends who, who is writing a book right now about uh, a serial killer who murdered, I think, 15 or 20 Jews. And so she's given him a voice and why he did all he did. And a lot of people had a problem with that. But again, I feel that she is trying to expand this view and where, you know, again, the, the line between like good and evil is really bloody. And uh, so... Okay, and it really comes down to uh, what you're trying to explore, but definitely, I think the greys are really important. Yeah. Thank you. Sapna? Hello? Can you hear me, Sapna? Sapna, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can yeah. hear you. Just want to say, that among us we have, I just want to thank a person, Devinder Dhar. He has right. been my student in 69-70. And when I okay. sent him this, uh, yeah, and he is now a big retired officer and staying in Australia. And at present, he is connected with us from Australia. So I really feel very happy that he could make it, even despite time, time difference. And again, I also appreciate Manan a lot. I have seen Manan grow 
right <laughs> as a child right up to this right uh, his mother was my first phd student way back in 80s right. so but these two persons i especially want to make sure of course others are welcome and others i have already welcome but these two persons it's That's a great all. legacy it's a great legacy which has been handed down <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you okay yeah right uh, if we don't have any other questions i think we'll wrap to this session should we okay yeah sure thank you thank you for inviting me here and it was a great uh, we would love to have you tomorrow as well manu sure ma'am i'll i'll be there yeah. I'll, i'll join yeah. you thank you thank you so much right uh, all right i would really like to thank uh, dr usha bande dr jayanti dimri and manan kapoor for their wonderful presentations we've uh, really been uh, you know enriched in uh, every way possible uh, with their presentations and uh, whatever they have shared in terms of uh, how they have creatively uh, you know how they have turned into creative writers and how uh, the journey that they have undertaken so far and uh, we are really grateful and uh, i thank all the participants who have been um, you know